Today, we've got three tips to be present and productive. We're going to align, connect, and prosper in the new normal today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 124. You can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. Jan, I'm looking forward to this com- this conversation today. I think everybody needs this. It's uh, I'm sure if you, it's, it's not on people's mind, it needs to be. So what are we going to talk about? And if you're watching, uh, instead of just listening, you'll see that Matt is still in beautiful Florida. He's got a nice background there today on the video. You can get a link to that over at YouTube or over in our show notes at wbnlpodcast.com episode 124, right? That's right. What are we going to talk about? Well, I, I was revisiting an article, a post that we did that's in one of our courses called Align Connect Prosper. Uh, we'll definitely tell you about our progress we're making. We're very excited about our new launch of WBNL Coaching. I guess we're calling it 3.0, right? That's right. We got a new platform. We've got new training. We just recorded. Here's a little sneak preview. We just recorded yesterday a brand new course called Agent Referral Network with our other great friend and coach, David Squire. We're super excited to launch that and tell you more about it. Um, and get you a great deal on what we're doing in that new platform. Oh my gosh, Matt, that platform is like, I don't know, 10 times better than what we've ever done before, right? It is (laughs) awesome. (laughs) Absolutely. So I was looking for some content for today because I don't know if you're feeling like I am, Matt. You know, as we record this, it's a Friday, it's June 26th. So just if you're listening and it's later than then, it's it, the world has con- is it's just not going to stop this virus thing is just not going to stop for a no, while and you know we, we've talked for weeks now about limiting how much information you take in and and finding ways to find the balance and i came across this and i loved it and i thought wow first of all this guy wrote this article it's called the magic of doing one thing at a time by tony schwartz he's written a couple best-selling books he wrote this article march 14th 2012 so I looked at it, I said, let's, let's pull, there were three things in there, and I think I wrote this article probably um, maybe three or four years ago. I so think it was, yeah. Still relevant, but, but we're going to put a spin on it today because it's even, there's even more anxiety and stress and chaos in our world. And so we're going to go through three things that will help you be productive, but be present, and how to adapt it in COVID-19 reality. It's awesome. That's I'm looking forward to this. So that's what we're going to talk about. And how? so how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, we hey, we're doing good. Like I, I've, I've said the last couple of weeks, you know, I've, I've been here in Florida. Everything is opening up here, much to the detriment of society, unfortunately, because the numbers are really, really spiking. So we haven't really been doing much. I'm, I'm here. Opening up, but maybe just like Nevada, Florida is getting a little bit more clear about wearing masks. And maybe well, it's interesting. Are, it's, it's, some it's, businesses it's, are on their own deciding to shut down. It, I, I thought it's article about county, Tampa. county by county yeah. uh, is the mask orders right now. And uh, yeah, a lot of businesses have said, you know what, this is not going to work uh, for the well-being of our own employees and everything. So it'll be interesting to see what happens as things go on. But I mean, that Florida and Texas, I think right now are the real big hotspots as far as new cases and everything. So what's surprising? Why is Cal? You know, California, of course, is the most popular populous state but it's spiking even though yeah, you had the biggest you know yeah it's the same the same reasons i think people got cabin fever and when it you know it was over and then there's a certain segment of the population doesn't believe this is even a thing in the first place right. you know and it doesn't take very long for people that have it to spread it i mean that's right. just that is just the way it is now that doesn't mean that, doesn't mean it it's terminal be? What's it going to take for everybody to sort of get that? We it, It's going to be, we can either go the long, painful route, which is what I feel like we're doing now. We will do that. We could be like other places of the world who were a little tougher, but it was shorter, and now they're being a little smarter about getting back to normal. But yeah. it's, it's, this is the problem. It's so unknown, and the anxiety of the unknown and worrying is what's causing so much. That's why we're going to share these three, three things to, to help you be more productive, 
be in the moment. That's the key thing here. And find that elusive, you know, first of all, finding work-life balance has always been elusive. Now, on top of that, when you talk about cabin fever and all that. Yep. So let's bring it all together and let's dive in and talk about these three things and see if we see if we can share what we've been doing on these three things, Matt, the, yep. to the best of our ability and um, share what, if people aren't doing it and you need a little outlet, we hope to give you some inspiration today. Groovy. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, you are in episode 124 of the WBNL podcast. All the show notes, and we got a bunch of show notes over there for you today. Uh, we are going to be talking about... Um, some great tips Matt has over in Wandering But Not Lost, but that's number three. So I want to start with the first two. Now, the one I mentioned at the top of the show, the article, you can go read Tony Schwartz's article about the magic of doing one thing at a time. I have to tell you, I a lot of times talk about the things I personally <laughs> need to listen to. And this was so spot on for me because I always have a million things to do, as we all do. And I have been really realizing that I'm getting frustrated, Matt, because I'll have like four pads of paper with the four areas of work and things that I'm working on our team, working on coaching, you know, working on personal things. And I do a little of each of them and nothing ever gets accomplished. So, and I know when I coach that you should do one thing at a time and knock it out and get it done, even though 10 more things might come on your list. So I constantly struggle with this first thing. And the first one is called do the most in most important thing first thing in the morning. So there is a, there's the list of projects and things that you need to do. And then there's really, what is the activity as a business owner, all the business owners listening, realtors or whoever you are, there is one activity that if you did it consistently every day would have the most impact on your overall life, obviously on your business, your production and so forth. And the key is you need to do it first thing in the morning. Uh, that is what most experts say. And the great Brian Tracy in the awesome little tiny book called Eat That Frog specifically wrote a whole book about this one principle. And that, and this is what he says in there. You can get control of your time in your life only by changing the way you think, work, and deal with the never-ending river of responsibilities that flow over you every day. I mean, yeah. Okay. That, so That sums it up. It sums it up, but your frog in his book is your is your um, biggest, most important task, the one that you always like to procrastinate on. And for business people, it's lead generation. Yeah, always. It, it is lead generation, attracting new business. If you did this one thing consistently, and there's a you know 20, 30 different activities that you could put into this daily. We just wrote a whole course and recorded it yesterday on one particular activity that you could do that could That's generate right. business and it's building your agent referral network and just adding that one thing to your life, um, it, it would be powerful. And I know this, so we're making a transition. I'm making a transition back into full-time coaching and uh, launching our business for our online training and building our, our um, uh, team, our real estate team here in Vegas. And Matt, I'm going to just be totally transparent and honest here. And what should I be doing every single day? I should be getting on the phone and reconnecting with past clients, right. both in the sphere of influence for, for, for my coaching business and also for uh, people that might want to buy or sell. And I have not been doing that. I have you know, it's not my day to go, oh, I've got this project I've got to do. I've got to finish our course. And I'm guilty of it. So I'm just coming out and saying, I'm that person just like you. It's time to recommit. Go ahead. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I love that we're having a wandering but not lost therapy session today because it Thank really you. is something that we all need. You know, Jan O'Brien and I talk to each other uh, pretty near every day, except for whenever we are out of town. So it has been uh, w less uh, frequent over the last month since I've been down here in Florida. So the other day, Jan called and Jan was um, uh, feeling a little overwhelmed, I think was the word. Right. And it was about prioritizing what's going on. You know, there's a list of a, thousand, a million things to do all the time, right? And, and prioritizing that and doing the most important thing first thing in the morning is really important. I have to uh, take another little spin to this. 
I that, needed my coach. I need you. You're my coach. <laughs> no, it's interesting because it helps me too, because it reminds me, you know, because when you talk about that, you actually do the prior, uh, pr prioritize. That's it. <laughs> that was a really difficult word. See, I'm already starting to yeah. melt. This is what happens when I melt outside. He is in like 100 degrees it with the humidity really, of like making pretty, it feel like it's 110 as 100, he records this. Yeah, 150 degrees. Anyway, what I was going to say is that, the you know, to to do the most important things is very, very in, uh, important. I also try to do myself the things that I really don't like to do, which sometimes are the most important things you need to do, like prospecting. No one wants to jump in and make telephone calls. But there are some things on your list every day that you just don't really, they're not your favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. And if you knock those out first, they're not hanging over your shoulder the right rest on. of the day. And you can actually, it, it, it makes me always feel lighter and I feel more like I'm uh, more productive throughout the day. What a so, great point you're making because it's to get it off the thing. And if you don't, then it just is always nagging yeah. in the back of your head, which causes additional stress. And we already have enough stress. Right. I mean, I so, have a couple items that I don't have to do every day, but I'd have to do on a consistent basis that I just do not like to do. It's very boring, mundane thing. And if I don't do it in the beginning of the day and I know I need to get it done that day, I will be, it will weigh me down the entire day. So if you get it off your plate, you can move on and you then you can get 10,000 more things done because all you're really trying to do is not do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway, just a little extra to that, you know. So a couple of things I've been doing lately that are helping me off of my master list of, you know, 50 things that need to get accomplished, I will start, first of all, I am doing very good starting my day with my morning routine. I've been doing yoga, I have been meditating, and I have been listening to music. And oh my gosh, it is night and day on how my energy is different. I just feel better. If I don't do it, and I allow myself to not do that, then I'm just in that funky grind space yep. that that doesn't help. So it is so important to find the thing that it helps you get super jazzed up to start your day. And it could be whatever it is for you. We've talked about that ad nauseum on the podcast. So daily, daily routine, enough said, do it. Okay? Yeah, and, exactly. And then jump in. This is what this whole point is. Daily routine, then jump in and get this frog done. Get your frogs done. Eat the frogs, get it done, get it out of the way. And then there's always a million things to fill up. If you do the thing that is going to help you get the most business uh, reaching out to clients, follow, doing lead follow-up, making those calls. I'm, I'm jazzed about that. So that's my commitment, Matt Emerson. Like it. 60 to 90 minutes in the morning after my daily routine, starting the day out, knocking out. And I have so much to do. I could get it done in the next two weeks just by, because I'm sending personal notes and videos and stuff to reconnect with clients to let them know, announce what I'm doing. Right. So N namaste. Very good. All right. The second one, is establish regular scheduled times to think more long-term creativity creatively and strategically. So an easy way to say that is it's not always in the business, doing the business. You've got to find time, put it into your calendar to work on your business, but it's not just about working on the, Oh, cool. What's in the background? I'm hearing like ducks. I know there's, I, I know <laughs> this, it's a beautiful type of uh, egret. It's black. It's beautiful. Okay, whatever. I'm loving it. I'm, I can't wait. We're going to talk. The third is about getting up and getting out. So we're going to talk about that one in a second. But I, I feel like I wish I was kind of where you are sitting right yeah, now, um, it's very to nice. be honest. Okay. But th this idea here, number two, is you've got to also book time in your day or week where you find, uh, you sit and either work on visualization, you maybe do some reading. This is not just your daily routine. This is more two things here creative time and then time to actually stop and not do all the tasks of things that you've got to do, but actually finish up a business system or do some things that you're working on the business. We are consumed all day with in real estate with closing the deal. Your day is filled with all the tasks okay. that come up in the fires to put out. But you've got to work that, but you also have to find time to be strategic in your thinking about what it is that you want to do. And here's the thing under the times we're in now. I think it's important to create some space in your house for this. I mean, we've talked a few times on the podcast now how I think real estate's going to change as it comes to the people that are going to emerge out of this are designers, stagers, people who are renovators of homes. If people, the new builders are going to start building floor plans that allow for all this multiple reasons and functionality in a home. But if you don't, if you can't run out today and go buy a new house, um, what could you do even without spending major dollars to renovate your house or place that you live? What can you do just to create space? And if somebody goes, I live in a small apartment, I don't care. You can find a tiny space you can. somewhere in your home that you could create that sacred space that you know. And here's the whole point. You set the intention that when you go to this space, 
this is not where your TV is. This is not where you have distractions. It's a little tiny space. It could even be in a dang closet. I don't even know. I have it in my room. So in my room, I have a little spirit table. I have a cushion. I know when I go to that space, that's for activities that allow me to unwind and right. be creative. That's the point I make. Do you, and you have something like that in your oh house. Oh my God. And I miss it so badly when it comes to, you know, just getting work done because it's, it is my space and I, I, I treasure it. <laughs> and I, I didn't, I always knew I did, but since I've been away from it for such a long time, I didn't realize how much I did. Just working in that space is, makes me feel more creative. And um, it's just, it feels, it is just that place to be. There's nothing worse than working out of a space that is you really, really for something else. Like a dining room table is not your work area. You know, no. it's just not, you know, you need to, you need to be somewhere that you have, it's your place to go. And I'll tell you, and we've talked about this before, but you know, there's a lot of importance to what you're talking about as far as, you know, focusing on different things throughout the day, you know, getting up. And I, I think it's super important to get up and, you know, you have a standing desk, Jan, it's important to get up and move around. You need yeah. to get your, you need to do that activity. And I don't ever eat at my desk. I don't do, I mean, I snack sometimes, but I don't, when it's lunchtime, you leave I it. stop, I stop for lunch, you know, and I, you know, I've been working from home now for five years. So, you know, this is not new to me being in the house all the time. And I know it is to a lot of people, but you, you can't just power through, you know, that is your lunchtime. So you take your break for lunch you know and you have a place that you do that and that's the absolutely. point your it's house really now you look at your living space as how you can have a mental shift to i'm leaving the work area now and i'm going to go take a break yep. and the one point that you just made me think about um like even just sitting outside like i've been to your place and you've got a really cool front and backyard yeah small patio area now depending on the weather and where you are just getting outside for a little bit to take a breath of fresh air or taking that walk around your block, which also is another way to handle this number two point where it gives you the, the separation in the space to allow some creativity to come in. And exactly. I, that happens to me a lot when I walk, even when I'm driving, frankly, um, is where I'm not in the moment of all the activities that that's when I uh, create space for things to come in that right. help me. Right. Yeah, I, so, I really miss that thing because I, I usually walk almost every night or afternoon. I actually, this summer, I've been walking in the morning. It, I, here in Florida, I just can't. It's too hot. I'm not used to this. It's so funny. Just as a side note, I was uh, turning. I had to go. Uh, I've been here such a long time. I had to actually go back to the rental car place. And I got the same car, but I had to re-up my contract. Mm -hmm. And I was noticing as I was looking around, because I'm like dripping sweat the minute I get out of the car. All the employees are just, they got their masks on and they're just looking they're like to the humidity. I know I said, I, I know I laugh. I said, you know what? You can always tell the people that are here in the uh -huh. business as opposed yeah. to the Floridians mm -hmm. because they're not sweaty like me. I'm like, my shirt has rings on it. So, I mean, literally it was funny. So, so, you know, I suppose I could acclimate and do some walking in the future, but so far it's just been too. It takes a while. while. You know, Matt, I grew up in the Georgia area, same yeah, humidity right. and visited Florida much. And so I, it's so funny because I spent most of my you know, t a good 15 years there. And then I traveled and, and, and whatnot. And then I've been on the West Coast most of my adult business right. life. So there was a year that I went back to Georgia and I had the hardest time adjusting. Like, why, why is this so hard? It never bothered me before, to your point. You know, because then you're like, it's the humidity and you have to allow your body to get used to it and adjust to it. Just like out here where it's so freaking hot. Yeah, hot. Um, I'm okay with it. But in the very beginning when I was here in Vegas in the summers, I'd be like, oh my God, it's like you're in an oven, right? But now it's like, it's okay. It's not, your body gets used yeah. to it. It's interesting. But, but we digress. But find we digress. A way. The find point, a way. Yeah, the point is, if you're, good, if you're able to get out and do that and to open your mind up and get creative, is, you know, I, I, I miss that. And it is so important. That's the way I do it. And it's, well, to that point, don't make an excuse that it's too hot or too humid you can find something even sure. matt like what you're doing matt's recording even though he's he's probably sweating he's recording right. this he's outside he's enjoying it he's getting a different look and feel and that's the right. point we're making here is that you're feeling confined people are getting cabin fever so that brings us to number three which in tony schwartz's article was take uh that i pulled the parts i like take real and regular vacations and here's what he says real means that when you're off you're truly disconnecting from work Regular means several times a year if possible, even if some are only two or three days added to a weekend or long weekends, right? right? Research strongly suggests that you'll be far healthier if you take all your vacation time and more productive overall, right? So if we don't take the breaks, it really impacts our productivity overall, our mental health and so forth. So let's talk a minute now. We've covered a little bit this in our in our previous shows, but 
what are some ideas that I listed a couple of things to start the discussion, Matt, but some ideas to be creative and safe during COVID-19. Uh, my first one is how about discovering local places in your city or state that maybe you've never gone to, because when you think vacation, you think I've got to go here. I've got to right. get, I, you know, I got to get out of town and go somewhere. And you talked a little bit th about this, but there are so many things most of us have not even seen in our own community. Oh, no doubt. Slash state that could be a day getaway or a couple hours. And that can be enough to, to feel like you're taking, you know, a break from being in your house. And it can be safe. You don't have to necessarily be interacting with people. You could just right. go someplace and do it, right? Absolutely. So that it's like day trips. So maybe you make a list of things that you could do that you have a day a week and maybe right now doing it in the middle of the week, if your job affords you the opportunity to go do something that's not, you know, the time everybody else is taking it off. Um, Matt, let's talk a little bit about the national parks um, and state parks, right? So a lot of them are open, but there's definitely a little research you need to do. And Matt, I have a link to Matt's a blog post. Um, he, he did one a little bit ago called Finding Wellness in Nature. And you have links to all types of things to do things right. virtually. Um, yeah, you, you, know. really, you really have to do your research right now because national parks in particular, I'm, you know, I, I'm always keeping up on what's going on there. They're all pretty much open with, with restrictions and uh, most as many of them with uh, uh, attendance structuring to where it's not going to be wall to wall people or wall to wall cars, you know, and almost all of them are like that now. Uh, social distancing, you know, they every every website you go to is encouraging mask uh, participation. Although I don't know that you know they're saying it's necessarily required in the national parks, you know, because you know you are a little bit safer outside. But here's the deal: you're only as safe as you are until someone comes up and sneezes on you and or near you, and there you are. You know what I mean? So it doesn't. You know, normal it, is you got masks with you and you put them on. If you're out and about and nobody's around. Right. Around you, I think you're okay, but you got to be ready to mask up if you come across people, right? But the thing I think you really need to think about when you're going to you're planning a national park trip is to first of all, like we just just said, do the research because a lot of them are requiring reservations now, and uh, they're booking up fast, and people are booking them. And and here's the thing, and this is always a tip, that, a pro tip that I talk about every time I talk about making a reservation. If you don't get one or you want one, keep watching it because people are making them and they're going to cancel them because they're just making them to have them. And if it doesn't work, they're, they're going to open back up again. So, you know, that's super important. And the park staff is so useful. So I want to share what happened. Yeah. So my friend Tina uh, was like, let's go to let's go to Zion. So I was like, well, let's go do some homework on it and see, because we can't just, you know, this is where people have to get the mindset. And I had this conversation. I think I might have shared it with my sister a few weeks ago, trying to go out and say, hey, let's go to this restaurant. My, my niece was in town. Oh, yeah. Well, you need reservation. They didn't yeah. think about you might need a reservation and a restaurant. Same thing. So, so I called. I I called and I got this really awesome. It was uh, Zion's one of my favorite places to go. And I'm like, let's go see. So, first of all, the park had a, a, a document you could download that said, here's what's open, here's what's closed, here's what the thing is. So I called the number, and this girl was just awesome. She was like, this is what I recommend. You know, if you are familiar with Zion, everybody likes to go to the Narrows, which is at the top end of the um, the drive-in, the scenic drive-in. There, they have restrictions like only 400 parking spaces they're not running their park shuttles generally when you go to zion you park and take one of their shuttles yeah. they're not running the shuttles but she's telling me all these you know insider tips uh outfitters in town are running shuttles um if you're going to drive up and you want to get to the narrows you better queue up around three o'clock in the morning because as soon as the parking spaces are filled they're gone and but pe there's water up there and it's beautiful that's that's a fun thing but you could do angels landing hike matt she said just until that top part is is um the the top part of that hike is apparently closed off uh, yeah but, oh, of course it would be of course right and because so, you're, you're you're literally hanging on chains on your way up to the top there and that would be the most unsanitary thing in the world to be doing right with yeah that's what it is the chained area is what you yep. said uh, yep. is, which is actually gets on. you really up to angels landing so you can't go all the way to the top but you can go to scouts lookout i think is the highest yeah. you can go right now which is beautiful that getting up there is a gorgeous hike but you always talk about this and i think i shared this with you so she was saying look i want to tell you about a couple of favorite hikes of mine this is yeah. the girl telling me and she's like go to the east side of the park and don't go on the beaten trail where everybody is and the spots are going to fill up. And, you know, she, she told me about two East side little uh, things and going through the scenic tunnel, which I've gone. And then of course I had discovered that. I think you told me about going up. Um, can't think the name of the Canyon where the road is um, red, you know, the asphalt's reddish. Color. Oh yeah. Yeah. It goes up. Um, and those are, 
checkerboard, yes. checkerboard mesa up on that. And that all area. those yeah. are beautiful places. And so these are the things that not everybody knows about. And so, you know, here's the thing. If you're thinking about taking a, a trip or discovering someplace that you can go, I bet if you go over to Wandering But Not Lost, Matt has been blogging on this for five plus years. Long He's, time. He has probably talked about something that's in your state or area. No uh, and you can find it or city because he's, he's talks a lot about different things that you can do that are off the beaten trail for cities that you'd have to adapt because not everything is open, but there's definitely, if you just get creative and you think about, all right, so our mind has just got to change about, I can't go take that cruise or I can't go maybe travel to another country that I was going to do. That's our reality. So what could you do uh, that is still getting you out and enjoying something that's maybe closer to home or, or a, definitely a state or national park is doable if you do a little planning, right? Completely. I think it's a great idea to get out. It's, it, they're always inspiring. You know, talking about, you know, getting the cobwebs out of your head, uh, to me, that's the best thing in the world you can do. And and it's just good to get back into nature. And, and, and it's such a beautiful time of year right now, too, because we had a pretty uh, wet and rainy uh, year and snowy year around the country. So we're not into the point where it's all hot. And, I mean, it's hot, but uh, uh, there's still beautiful uh, foliage and wildflowers and everything that are out in the parks right now. So definitely Boy, get out have there. You, yeah. Have you counted how many posts you've you've, you've No, but there's a, there's a lot up here. Oh, I'm looking. He's scrolling through his his home page. This is just actually gorgeous because it's got the shots of the different uh, the pictures of the different sites and places that he's been. I'm seeing everything from Florida to Disney. Well, speaking of Disney, looks like Disney is going to put things on hold a little bit. Did you see that? Yeah, too? because the state of California is pausing phase three and phase three was theme parks and public events. So yeah, yeah Florida? absolutely. Uh, Florida, of course, Florida, you know, they will not make a decision um, uh, statewide. So the company, is, uh, as far as I know, the, uh, Disney World is still opening on the 11th, I believe, of July. Mm. So uh, I, I wouldn't bet, go I there with a 10-foot pole. No kidding, and I bet they changed that. That's a mistake. No, I don't think they will. You don't? I really, I really don't. I don't. I really don't think they will. Universal Studios has been open down here in Florida for a couple of weeks now, and and uh, social di people. So you're in an amusement park with masks. That doesn't sound in, quite fun. No, it doesn't sound fun at all. They, uh, yeah, you are in there with masks. Uh, they're really reduced the uh, crowd size. You know, I've seen a lot of people's vlogs on uh, that because I'm, you know, I'm always I'm a theme yeah. park uh, holic, so I'm always interested in that. And what are they um, uh, that they're well, it's funny because they're saying that. Um, uh, the parks really are not that crowded, you mm -hmm. know, they, you know, because people are still very cautious about going right now, uh, going out right now. And I think people are like letting people go out and be the, the guinea pigs to see what's, you know, see what's happening. So I actually I think, think that across the board, I feel yeah. like most people are feeling like not yet. Yeah. I know at, at Disney, they are going to uh, re resume opening downtown Disney on July 9th, like they were planning on doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to open up and they'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, the state of California is kind of putting the brakes on phase three. So we'll see what happens there. It's interesting. It really is to see, you know, just what's going on with all of that kind of entertainment. Like down here in Florida this weekend, actually tomorrow, movie theaters are starting to uh, open oh, back up. no. I would not do that in a million <laughs> years. <laughs> So, you know, it's just, it's interesting to see, you know, what's well, happening in different parts of the country. So, so you know what, Matt, we're going to, we're finishing up here and I'm thinking it's the 26th of June as we record this. Uh, I want to be able to fast forward about three or four months and see what has really happened. I know. Uh, you know what I mean? And come back and say, remember on June 26th, we were talking about amusement parks and this and that. And then, just don't know. Hey, I, mean, I, I, I have a, a little aside story to tell you know, regarding wandering. You know, my uh, sweet pea and I go to New York City every year for Thanksgiving. Right. We've been doing it for years and years and years now. And we always, you know, go see a couple of Broadway shows. And this year we were going to see The Music Man, which uh, was starring, um, oh my goodness gracious. Hugh Jackman and oh, wow, um, goodness gracious, she's like the most popular. Uh, anyway, not important. I'll come back to that. But it was Kristen obviously Shepherd no, was not no. Whatever oh, her name, I always get her name wrong. So angry, I can't think of her name. But always on the top of my head, I'll I'll think of it. But anyway, it has been everything. Broadway's been closed for months and months and months. So it was so funny. The other morning, I was thinking, well, we haven't heard a thing about that. You think they would let us know what's happened? Is it just canceled? Oh, you, had, you have it booked. Oh yeah, we we always book a year in advance. So we had this play. You got the library right? hotel open. Well, Here's a funny thing that that play because it was such a their headliners Sutton Sutton Foster that's her name thank you, um, uh, 
they had that that play was going to be it was such high profile that it booked out i mean the whole run of it booked out like like within a couple of weeks it was gone it might have even been less than that so we had those tickets and we were so excited now with all this going on we were like what's ha- what's happening with that play a and if that play doesn't happen are we still going to new york because i'm really not all that thrilled to go to new york this thanksgiving anyway even though that's still five months off i'm still like mm-hmm. you know what let's put the brakes anyway the other morning we got the announcement the play was going to um uh premiere actually in april with it actually opening in may and what they did was they just took everyone's original reservations that still had them and just shifted the calendar all the way to the opening date and our new uh florida our new florida our new new york trip now is going to be at the end of june 2021 so i'm actually jazzed about it because it's actually a year from yesterday which is weird to think that that's how long that's going to be uh but now we have something to look forward to i really hope by that time we have a a vaccine scene to this mess. Uh, we'll see if that all pans out. You know, who knows? Is everything could get shifted again. But it was just so funny just talking about wandering and having something to look forward to, even if it's down the line, is super important too. I, oh my gosh, that's absolutely right. That's why booking, I've got some things booked. I'm going back uh, to, is if uh, again, you book things and if stuff happens and you make the adjustments, but you at least have something to put it out there. So a Zion trip, yeah. going to back to Atlanta and to Florida in September to visit family. Uh, you know, uh, and we're talking about maybe getting together as a family and uh, over the holidays. So that's important stuff, right? It, it really and is. Plan it and figure out how do you do it safely? How do you make some things happen so you can look forward to because time does go buzz by. And I think that's exciting. In June 2021, that is where that is a new goal of mine to be back East Coast side. Uh, they, uh, we'll be swapping. OK, I'll, yeah. be, I'll be doing where you are and. Uh, talking about all the things that are in the area. I would like to be at, uh, that's my goal time. So we'll see what happens, yep, right? Yep, yep, right? yep, so I love here it. we are a year later, we'll, we'll come back to this and make a note and say, what, what was happening a year ago on the podcast? That's one cool thing about doing this podcast. We're, we're generally covering whatever is going on. We're sharing tips and this and that and real estate and business uh, ideas and coaching, but, but we're also talking about our experiences and where we're at and here we are. We're all doing it together. So. It is uh, certainly a little snapshot in time and a little time capsule. That is for sure. Great tips today, Jan. You know, I'm telling you, the, the, you know, you follow the three tips that we talked about today and put them into your routine and into your plan and in your agenda. You know, you will be better off for it mentally, right? Yeah. You know, what we talked about, we're, we're one of our, we have several little principles in WBNL coaching, um, and one of them for sure is less is more. We've really developed that. David has introduced that to us, and less yep. is more. Choosing the highest quality most productive things that you can do. You don't need to pile more things on your plate. You need to simplify your life. That's so right. That hopefully we covered with you today are going to help you with that and staying focused on what's important and what's important is not always working. Okay. Finding that balance. But when you are working, be in the moment, do what's going to get you the most uh, bang for your buck as it were, meaning you'll generate money uh, and then let the rest of the stuff fall in place. So good. Great stuff. Right. Okay. Watch the space. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. That's a wrap for episode 124 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meets all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Dan O'Brien, as we always say and pat ourselves on the back, great stuff today. That was really good. I have a question for you. Have you been keeping up on, I mean, obviously the protests around America, around Black Lives Matter has still been going on very, very strongly, you know, and it's so interesting to see the changes and everything that's, that, that companies and cities and um, you know, uh, organizations are making, uh, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of things about statues and things that have been being, mm-hmm. are being removed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Disney made an announcement yesterday. I don't know if you heard about this. About the, 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 the Disney princess? Splash Mountain is yeah. going away. And I, you know, I, I actually got up, or I was up early this morning and I was I had to remember, it. like, it's the Song of the South, right? So it's That's that it. whole theme, well, yeah. You know, it's funny. When I was at Disneyland and I was going through the management training program, Splash Mountain was being built so that was like 32 years ago i think is when that was and uh, i remember going through that thinking to myself at the time who 
the hell could the, who the hell knows <laughs> what Song of the South is? Because it's kind of funny because that was a a uh, movie that you know did not do all that well, and Disney has not re-released that film since it originally came out mm -hmm. uh, because of the controversy of the characters in that film. Um, but you know they they were they tried their best when they they built that to remove the characters from the actual. Racism, mm -hmm. racism of the actual story itself, you know. So none of the characters that were involved in none of the human characters, obviously, are portrayed in the the um, the attraction anyway. I so thought it was interesting. Like, what an interesting choice! Couldn't they have done something else that would have been people would have recognized I, I, more? Why, why did okay? Kudos Disney, but here's the deal: Disney has been good about having diversity in the princesses, so they're not uh -huh. all you know white little girls. Sure. But why haven't they? I don't see the diversity in the park. Now they're doing that with the Princess and the Frog character well, in this they, Splash they, Mountain. But, you know, that could have been done earlier. Yeah, you know, I think, like, you know what, they haven't built I mean, it. Come on, seriously, I really want to talk to you about this. What, what, because I might be wrong. It, when I think about California Park, um, right. there's Ariel, there's Frozen Elsa. Who, who else is a princess that's prominently featured? It, you know, in an amusement or in a in, a, in anything that's out there. Yeah, I'll tell you it, the way Disney has has done that. They really haven't built any, with the exception of the Frozen attraction in Florida. There hasn't been any attraction that's been built around any of the Disney cartoons, right. you know, except for Ariel. But that was long overdue because, for crying out loud, she was the original rebirth yeah. of the Disney right. animation. You know, but here's the thing: all of the parks. Um, uh, Highly utilize all of all the princesses the, I know that. in the parades, in yeah. the meet and greets, That's and um, right, all of that kind of stuff. So that right, and, and they're, they're nighttime entertainment. So. All right, Disney, I'll, I'll yeah. give you that. But it's like this is the only thing that I think is like okay. It's it takes this massive uprising of awareness over all of this, and then companies now decide to do the right thing. You know you what's know? funny about that though, and I will tell you, and I'm going to give you, you know, this is a lot of people might not know this or even think this is true, but it is uh, because I've been hearing this for a long time. They have been working on this changeover of Splash Mountain for over a year now. Uh, it, they said that in the thing. Yeah, that I and, and it is true. They have, because here's the, here are the reasons, and I'm going to tell you, the, I'll tell you the, the real reason. All right, it's it. supporter. I am. I'll tell you the real reason behind this, and this is probably, this is, I don't know if this is such a supporter, it gets down to economics. Because you can't sell merchandise around Song of the South, but you can sell one heck of a lot of merchandise around Princess and the Frog. So part of the reason for this is economic uh, over uh, um, political and uh, all of that. So it, but it certainly pushed it over the edge, and it was a great time to announce it. And I'm, I'm actually, you know, it's so funny, I've been watching blogs and people are, you know, all like, oh, I can't believe this. I mean, they're not, they understand it and they agree, but they're going to miss the other. I'm like, I don't think it's going to change that much. I mean, the story is going to be different. There's going to be sure. different characters in there. But it's still going to have the Splash Mountain the, experience. You go there for the freaking ride. Well, I was going to say it's the same damn ride. <laughs> it's a great ride. This is what it is. It's One a fantastic my favorite. I, the minute I heard it, I'm like, woohoo. It's a new thing. It's like when they changed the Tower of Terror to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. That was like the worst thing you thought the sky was falling. My God, Gal Guardians of the Galaxy Great. Mission Breakout is like the best freaking ride in the boat That's park. Great. It's awesome. So I actually this is like it be better now than it was the, the Oh, I mean, that was way, kind of great. Way this is one that's, that, that is a cool thing about Disney is that you can take an experience that you've done again and again, Tower of Terror, and yep. then just even enhance it with a different storyline yeah. using something that uh, I'm a fan of Galaxy as a Guardian of the Galaxy anyway. Right. right? Yeah. Those characters. And it was just a whole new experience, even though it was the same damn ride. I know. So anyway, I just wanted to, to chat about that. I'd be really curious to see what other people think. So if you are a Disney fan and you have uh, you know thoughts on the Soul Splash Mountain changeover, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it because it's uh, I'm excited about it. I don't know when they're, they're they haven't announced whether they're going to start working on it or anything, but the announcement's out there and it's a cool thing. So all right, well you know times are changing and they're they changing are. rapidly. So hopefully those tips we gave you today are going to help you you know pick something, do the one thing, get up, get out, and. Be forever wandering, but not lost.